Hi, I'm Adam Zelsky, and this is Central Venus Catheterization from UCSD Ultrasound. There are three main locations that we use for central line placement. The internal jugular vein, the femoral vein, and the subclavian vein. For the purposes of today's lecture, we'll focus on the internal jugular vein as an example. For this procedure, you'll be using your high-frequency linear transducer. Now, before getting started, and once you have your patient in appropriate position, you want to assess your target vessel. Here, you can see the provider is using a transverse view of the internal jugular vein with color Doppler. On the left side of the screen is the high flow, thick walled carotid artery. And on the right side, your thinner walled internal jugular vein. You wanna take your probe and scan from high to low, low to high, assessing the path of the vessel and evaluating for any abnormal anatomy. On the right side of the screen, we're doing a similar scan, evaluating the internal vein, internal jugular vein, and the carotid artery in an inline approach. If you're not sure which vessel is the artery and which is the vein, you can confirm this using pulse wave Doppler. On the left side of the screen, in image A, you'll see the pulse wave tracker is over the vein, showing venous pulsations. In image B, it's over the artery, and you have a classic triphasic arterial waveform. It's important to assess the anatomy because you might find something you're not expecting. On the right side of the screen, the artery is directly overlying the vein, making an approach very difficult. Whenever starting catheterization of a vein, it's a good idea to compress the vein, ensuring that there is no clot within the lumen. Here you can see neither the artery or vein are compressible. The artery you'd expect given high flow and high pressure. This can be confirmed with the use of color Doppler. You can see here no flow within the venous lumen. Before starting the procedure, you want to make sure that you're adequately set up. Positioning is really important. Don't struggle. If you're doing an IJ approach on the right, set up your machine diagonally across the patient so you can easily visualize the screen. The same would be true with ephemeral approach. Here you can see we'd be set up to do a right-handed, right femoral approach, looking directly across the patient at our screen. Here's a common central venous kit, multi-lumen catheter, the one we have here at UCSD. A couple key tools. On the left side of the kit, you'll see your catheter over needle. The top right, you'll see your scalpel. Bottom, the dilator, and wrapped around the center, your catheter and guide wire. Starting, you'll wanna prep your linear probe. This means covering the footprint with a significant amount of gel that will go underneath your sterile probe cover. Now this is easier to do with an assistant that can hand you the probe into the sterile probe cover, but I encourage you to set up so that it can be done independently. Cover the probe with the adequate amount of gel and then place it in a location that you can easily reach and grab. For our approach, we'll be using one of two techniques. Here we can see an in-plane view. This is probably more commonly used for placement of peripheral IVs. You can track the needle in plane as it goes through the soft tissues and into the vessel lumen. More commonly with a central line, we'll use an out of plane technique. It's important when using this approach to step back 
an appropriate distance from your entry point in the vessel and to move forward the probe and the needle tip, tracking it through the soft tissues into the vessel lumen. Quickly on the geometry of this, you'll see that your needle approach is gonna be the hypotenuse of this triangle. With a 45 degree angle in your needle, that means the depth which the vessel is underneath the skin should be equal to the distance you step back your needle from your entry location. Here, we'll watch an example of a out of line approach on the right internal jugular vein. You'll see the provider has a catheter over needle and he follows the tip of the needle through the soft tissues down into the vessel lumen. Once in position, he removes the needle and advances the catheter. This can be left as what some call an easy IJ and used as axis itself. To move to a central line, we then place a wire through the catheter. You'll see the provider then uses his probe in a inline approach to visualize the wire within the vessel lumen. Once the wire is in place, the catheter can be removed. Here, we would use our scalpel to nick the skin. Now, we don't use the scalpel to cut down through the soft tissues or the vein, just to make an opening wide enough in the skin to advance our catheter and dilator. Once the skin is nicked, we use our dilator threaded over the wire and advanced through the soft tissues and the vein wall. This is to ensure that the catheter itself can be easily advanced. You'll see here, he places the catheter onto the end of the wire and then is sure to maintain control of the wire at all times. Very cautious not to let go of the wire as it can be lost within the patient. The catheter should then be advanced slowly over the wire into the vessel. Here, we'll quickly take a look at what an inline approach would look like. Now from watching this video, you may think that this approach might make more sense. But on a live patient with respiratory variation and the tortuous path of the vein, this can be much more difficult. As we mentioned at the beginning, there are two alternative locations for central line placement including the subclavian vein, just lateral to the angle of the clavicle, or the femoral vein. Once you've placed your catheter, you want to confirm its location and make sure we haven't caused any damage to the surrounding structures. With an internal jugular, this is going to be ensuring there is no pneumothorax, which can be done with ultrasound or x-ray and then the location of the probe, the catheter, within the vessel. Here you can see agitated saline being passed through the catheter and visualized within the right ventricle. You now have central venous axis.